Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Praise the one who created you and I in his own image. Praise the one that is the all-knowing God. Hallelujah. Praise the one that is omnipotent, omnipresent. Praise the one that is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. My name still remains blessing, O Samoye. I am here again. I am the vessel the Lord is going to be using today. Praise the Lord. And I have a very great man of God here. Why I use the word great is the Spirit of God in him that is the greatest of the greatest. Praise the Lord. And that is the Holy Spirit. And this is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit where the Holy Spirit in his own grace and power and wisdom will teach us the Word of God. He will be the one that will use us mightily. As I said before, I am the vessel the Lord is going to be using today as a host. But there's another vessel that the Lord is going to use mightily, wonderfully, by the Spirit that will teach us the Word of God in Jesus' name. As I said previously before, I told you the last previous recording that there's going to be part two of this topic called the teacher. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the Lord laid it in my heart to bring this man of God. I know by the grace of God, you know, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it talks about those that have the gift of teaching and the pastor, the prophets, and all those to edify the church. And I today God is going to use it to edify you and to edify himself as well praise the Lord Amen. and he's going to use it to edify me as well in Jesus name mm -hmm. I want you to relax call your friends call everyone connected to you to come and hear the Word of God to come and hear the undiluted Word of God and I believe that the Word will transform you and it will bless you in Jesus name and Amen. before we start let's pray praise the Lord let's open to the book of um, I think 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10. Let me read. I'm reading the Amplified Version of the Scriptures. Praise the Lord. Please, before we, I read the Scripture again, I want you to get your Bible ready as well. You know, it's always important we always have our Bible with us so that when people are preaching or reading the Word of God to us, we're able to check them if they are out of context or making a mistake. At the same time, if you're reading the Scriptures as well, you're reading the Bible as well, is it gives you room as well to receive revelation from God. Praise the Lord. So get your Bible as we begin to study the word of God together. Praise the Lord. Let's read. Verse 10 says, For God has unveiled them and revealed them to us through the Holy Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things diligently, even sounding and measuring the profound depth of God, the divine things far beyond understanding. What the writer is seeing is talking about the importance of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you're about to do in this place. Jesus, you said it in your word that you will send the Emperor, the Comforter. And we know, Spirit of God, you're already here because your word says so that when we gather together in your name that you'll be in our midst. So Father, I ask this moment that that woman, that man that is watching and ourselves, that you will teach us your word in the name of Jesus. Mm. And Father, we ask that as we begin to give you thanks, we ask for mercy to speak for us mm. in the name of Jesus. We ask for mercy to speak for everyone that is listening now in Jesus' name. And we ask, Father, that let them begin to see you than seeing us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let them begin to see the power of your word. Wisdom in your word, mm -hmm. let them begin to see the understanding in your word, mm -hmm. let them begin to see the knowledge of your word mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. That in all your life shine, that in all shine to be in an image of you, in that integrity that you want us to wear, that moral of your kingdom that you want us to wear in us, it's in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for when we pray as you promise, you will always hear us. And answer out according to your will. For Amen. in Jesus' most powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to introduce that man of God. His name is Pastor Vincent Fonsho. Praise the Lord. His name is Pastor Vincent Fonsho. I have been privileged. I've invited him here before to come and minister here. And I believe you watched the video that we did. I think it's somewhere between last year and this year, I think so. That if you watch it, you see he is a man that loves God and is a man that loves teaching the word of God. 
and not just teaching the Word of God, is a man that I have really, in a way, observed some of the fruit of the Spirit in him. And I believe, I use the word some, because we are all working in progress in Jesus' name. And you can see that a teacher, one of the quality of a teacher is that a teacher loves to talk about God. A teacher loves to help others to grow. And a teacher is someone that is very humble as well. And I've seen this quality in this man of God. He's a man that is happily married and he has two lovely children. I believe he has more spiritual children in Jesus' name. And um, I've been privileged to invite him here today. He's going to bless us in Jesus' name. Man of God, can you just lead us in, in, the, in thanksgiving of prayer? Praise the Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege of coming to learn on the, at your feet. Yes, Lord. Thank you because you are involved in our lives. Yes, sir. Even when we didn't know you, you knew us. You called us, you sought for us, and you brought us to yourself. Yes, Lord. And you are bringing us more and more to yourself, confirming us to the image of your son. Yes, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be thankful, to be appreciative of what you're doing. And even as we come today, help us to receive Amen. with appreciation in our hearts mm. and with determination to walk with you Amen. and to love you and to serve you. Amen. Now and forevermore. Amen. Receive all our praise and um, receive all the glory Amen. and the thanksgiving because we give them to you in the mighty and everlasting name of Jesus, your Son. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Can you just get ready and just be thanking God for giving you life. Begin to thank God for life. Begin to thank God for what was done on the cross of Calvary. Begin to thank God for, for giving you the power for the, all the part of your body to function well. Begin to give Him praise in Jesus' name. Say, Lord, I love you and I give you all the praise. The Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your wonders. Thank you for what you're doing around the world. Thank you for the leaders. Thank you for spiritual leaders. Thank you for all the political leaders. Thank you for every sector of life. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you for our families. Thank you for our children. Thank you for the power of resurrection that have destroyed and destroyed every yoke and breaking every chain. Now, thank you, Father, for that your praise is not seasoned from my mouth. Thank you, King of Glory, that you're preparing, that you're preparing a place for all, that we, as your children, when we finally meet with you, have a place that we will dine with you. Thank you, Father, for your holy of gladness. We just give you praise. You alone is worthy to be praised. For in Jesus' mighty name, we give you thanks. Praise the Lord. As I said before, we're going to be discussing about the teacher. And the man of God here is going to give us an insight more. Previously, I discussed about who a teacher was, and I discussed about the function of a teacher, and I talked about briefly about the importance of a teacher. But I want the man of God here to, in his own way, his own view as well, to tell us about the teacher. And before he talks about the teacher, in his own way he looks at it, praise the Lord, I want him to tell you about the ministry that God has given to him. Praise the Lord. Man of God, just bless them uh, about the ministry that you do. Praise okay. the Lord. Hi, as I've been introduced, my name is Vincent Funsha Olura. I'm a Bible teacher by calling and by gifting. And I lead a ministry called Word and Power Fellowship, um, which is a teaching and equipping ministry. But I'm also part of um, a big international ministry called Dynamis Fellowship Thank you. and also I'm part of a local church called um, London Riverside Church so I served on different in different capacities in, in all those ministries Thank you Lord and, um, and I've also written a book called Macedonian Givers mm, Praise the Lord Learning Stewardship Secrets with the Corinthians Macedonian Givers Learning Stewardship Secrets with the Corinthians you can find that on Amazon um, if you, when you search for it. So yes, um, God has helped me over the years to learn God's word on a daily basis and also to help other people to engage with our word and to um, walk in it. So yeah, that's, that's the Praise brief the, about me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be starting from, as we've said before, I think we're starting from Second Timothy. Thank you, Father. 
2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Mm. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. If you are there, say praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. You want to read, sir? Yes. So be diligent to present yourself approved to God. Mm. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, mm. rightly dividing the word of truth. Mm. Praise the Lord. So, so who is a teacher in your own okay. view? A teacher is someone that's, we're talking about a Bible teacher, because mm. you can be a teacher in the secular world, mm. you know. But a Bible teacher is someone who's been called and gifted by God. Mm anointed by the Holy Spirit mm. to teach, mm. expand, explain, and help to apply God's Word in people's lives. Mm. So a teacher is someone who takes time to study, to understand, and to help people to see how it applies practically mm. in their lives. Mm. And this is done under the inspiration and the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm. So a teacher is someone mm. who's gifted and called as, in, as part of the um, fivefold ministry gate mm. um, to especially teach God's word in a way that brings transformation, brings light, mm. and brings um, illumination to God's people. So based on what you've spoken now, is everybody a teacher? No. Most to some extent or the other. Mm. And if you are a child of God, and indeed if you're a minister, you should have a bit of an ability to teach. Mm. In fact, Paul, when he was given the, um, the qualifications of people who were going to be appointed as elders, mm. he said that they should be able to teach. So they should be able to explain, at least at the basic level, the mysteries of the faith to people in such a way that they will understand and they can apply. But God calls some people specifically and anoints them and sets them apart to be teachers of God's, of his word. Mm -hmm. Just as everybody, every Christian, for example, yeah. is called to evangelize. Mm -hmm. Everybody is called to be a sharer, a bearer and a sharer of the good news. And God will give you opportunity as a child of God to share the good news from time to time. Mm -hmm. But not everybody is an evangelist. True. Mm. So every child of God, when the Spirit comes upon them from time to time, can prophesy. But not everyone is a prophet. Mm. So all of that, God can, you can have some ability, and you can even train to some extent to do some of these things, particularly teaching. Mm. But what separates a, Bibli a Bible teacher mm. that is, is the, the level of the gifting mm. and the anointing that comes upon them to deliver God's word. Oh, praise the Lord. With such clarity mm. and with such power mm. that people can say, wow. So when a teacher is teaching, it can take even the most um, mundane scripture that you know. And by the time he expands on it, he says, wow never seen that. Mm. Uh, that's God is speaking to me. I'm seeing clarity. I'm mm. seeing understanding mm. um, of faith. So that comes by the gifting and the anointing of the Spirit. Praise God. So not everybody is called to be a Bible Praise teacher. teacher. Praise but the Lord. Most people who are Christians and particularly in leadership mm. can teach to some extent. Mm. So based on what you spoke now, thank God for the grace of God upon your life. Mm. I've, I've discovered that most of the problem we are having today, mm. not really to the body itself, mm. but to people getting information, being misled by certain informations. And a lot of people call themselves teachers. So how can I differentiate a motivational, motivational speaker from the teacher of the word? Well, a motivational speaker is someone who has the gift of the God. Mm who can sway you and who's persuasive mm -hmm. and who tries to get you as it were to point A by to point B by as, uh, asking you to see things and to depend upon 
your own abilities per se. Yeah. And, and some of those abilities are God-given anyway. Yeah. But the difference between a teacher is the fact that the, whatever he does and all that he does really is grounded in God's word. Yeah. It's not just about you asking you to perform or asking you to believe in yourself. A teacher first and foremost asks you to believe in God and in his word yeah. and a teacher is not dependent on oratory. Yeah. Most motivational speakers are very good orators. When they're speaking, they're quite persuasive. But, you know, like Paul said when he was speaking to the Corinthians, he said that when I came to preach to you, I didn't come in the eye sounding oratory of man. But rather, I came to you in weakness. I came to you trembling. He said, because so that I, the word of God would not be emptied of its power. I came to you not in high, using high sounding words, I know you're using sophistry and oratory. Yes. And this is, these are the tools that motivational speakers use. Mm. Sophistry, oratory, but I came in gentleness and in dependence upon the power of God. Praise God. So that's a, it's a different, um, it's a different, um, it's a different vibe to use a modern uh, language from, <laughs> from, from being a teacher. Praise, praise God. Um, viewers, uh, viewers, praise the Lord. We are discussing about the teacher part two. So I want you not to be left, if you just join in, we are discussing about a teacher, who a teacher is, and, and what you need to know, to know about teacher. I'm talking about spiritual teacher, not the secular word teacher, praise the Lord. So. Um, I want to ask another question again. Mm -hmm. You see, like certain people read certain scriptures sometimes, you know, when somebody's reading the scripture. Now, let's go to the, the scripture we are, we are talking about. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, mm -hmm. verse um, 15. Praise the Lord. Now, he said, study and do your best to present yourself mm -hmm. to God approved. To God approved. Mm. to God approved. Mm. Now this is Paul mm. speaking to Timothy yeah. as a son or as a father to his son yes. or someone as a mentor to yeah. uh, a son bringing up to do the ministry. Now here, I want you to digress a little bit. How, how will a, a, a teacher study to show himself up? How will a teacher study to, do, to, to show himself approved to God? Okay. To a layman, for you to pass him to a layman of understanding. Uh, the first thing really is if God calls you to be a teacher and if you're a teacher, you have a love of God's word mm. and you read it daily, mm -hmm. you meditate on it daily mm -hmm. and you would like to search things out. So if you're someone who studies just to preach yeah. or to teach yeah. then it's said that God has not called you to be a teacher yeah. or you are completely failing in that calling so the first thing is somebody who loves God's word yeah. and who takes time to read it daily yeah. who takes time to engage with it yeah. the whole of God's word who takes time to understand the the breath of God's counsel. You see, you know, one Paul was speaking to the Ephesians yeah. when he was departing the Ephesians, um, Acts 20. He said, I have not held back from declaring to you the whole counsel of God. Yeah. So a teacher is somebody who engages with the whole counsel of God. Yeah. Anybody who says, I'm a Bible teacher, but I only focus on this or not, at that area, you know, particularly in this day and age, there are people who say, oh, I'm a New Testament person. And is not for me but uh, that's is not being faithful to God's calling so the first thing is to to love God's word to engage with it you know, for yourself to seek to understand it to seek to apply it for yourself and then then you are then equipped to teach it but the important thing about being approved of God is somebody who's actually engaging with God's word and allowing that word to change and transform him. 
Mm-hmm. So for himself. So what is the role? What is the role of the Holy Spirit in between all this? You said well, the Holy Spirit gives you, I, like I said, if you are a teacher, the Holy Spirit will give you a supernatural love God for His Word above and beyond. I would say the ordinary Christian, mm-hmm. and also it gives you supernatural insight. Mm-hmm. That's why if you give a a simple Bible verse or viable verses to a teacher, by the time he speaks to on them, you'll be wondering, wow, this Bible verse, I've read it for how many times? And this person brings so many, so much insight. It gives me so much light, so much understanding, and I can see how he applies to me, mm-hmm. though that's so powerfully. That is not just based on, on human wisdom. Mm. It's not just based on you knowing how to um, um, dissect verses um, by virtue of physical learning. It's a function of the Holy Spirit applying. And always remember, mm. when you are teaching, mm. when, when you are teaching, you are not just yeah. teaching God's Word, but you are also um, you are not just teaching what is you are teaching, but you are also by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes upon you to apply it in a way that is individual to the people you are teaching, mm. and that's why when an, when some when it, somebody is teaching under anointing, there might be two thousand people in, in the hall, there might be twenty people, there might be two people, but they will be hearing. The same thing, but at the same time, the Holy Spirit will be ministering to them in different ways. Wow. And, and as the person teaches, the Holy Spirit will zoom in and illuminate a particular part of the scripture that is relevant to them by, by His anointing. Praise, so praise this so. is what happens. So based on what you said now, what is the quality of a, a teacher? Um, like I said, the first quality really is the person who loves God, One. somebody who's been called mm. and who has answered the call of God. Mm. The first thing is that you love God and you are willing to spend time with Him. Because mm. remember, when God called His apostles, the Bible says He went up to the, um, to the mountain and He called those of me who were His own to them. And He called them, the Bible says, that they might be with Him and then that he might send them out. So, and a teacher who is somebody who emphasizes that first part, that they might be with him. Being with God is the most important thing. Because even if you don't have opportunity to teach, even though if you don't have the opportunity to minister, mm. you still spend time with him. Because without that, whatever you're teaching, you, it will be dry and it will just be, be based on your wisdom. So spending time with him in, uh, and reading the word and trying to find out what does he say. Because it's important as a teacher to know what the good word of God says mm. and also what he means mm. and how does he apply. Mm. So for example, let me give you a, a very practical example because that's what you need to do as a teacher. I remember as a young Christian, I read the Bible where Paul was admonishing Timothy in, in Timothy. He said, Lay hands suddenly on no man, mm. and do not partake in other man's sin. Mm. Now, coming from the background I come from, when you say, ah, lay hands on somebody, that is, maybe you want to smack them or beat them. <laughs> <laughs> That's the understanding <laughs> I had. Yes. But, obviously, if you don't understand, but later, as I read the Bible and get it, I understood that laying of hands is about consecrating somebody by physically laying an anointed and of an anointed person on them mm. to consecrate them and set them apart for ministry. Mm. And the Bible talks in Hebrew um, 5 about the, the basic fundamentals of mm. the gospel of, of faith, mm. fundamental doctrines of faith. And one of the things he talks is that let us not lay aside, let us not lay again the foundation of repentance, mm. of repentance from dead works, of this and that, and of the laying on of hands. Mm. So there is a doctrine or teaching on laying on of hands. And from Genesis to Revelation, you can see 
that the ministry of laying on of hands is one way to minister, to consecrate people, to mm. set people aside, also to minister healing, mm. to minister affirmation, and to minister blessing on people. Mm. So, but if you don't understand, I mean, that's just laying on of hands, for example. A teacher can teach that for two hours and take examples from Genesis to Revelation and help you to see what dimensions of grace can be produced and what God can do through laying on hands mm -hmm. for healing, for consecration, for setting apart mm -hmm. and call. So it takes time to, to understand that and to bring it out for people to understand. Mm -hmm. so is that all you want to say about the qualities of a teacher? One, and the most important thing really, like I said, is loving God mm -hmm. and also reading the Word, Word of God, God mm -hmm. and also finding out how He applies. Mm -hmm. And also, a teacher is someone whose loyalty is forced to God mm. and to His Word. Mm. Because we live in a world where things are always changing. Mm. People always have different interpretations and different things. So, a true teacher of God's Word will be loyal first and foremost to God's Word. Mm. Irrespective of what the society is saying, irrespective of what mm. even the church is saying, irrespective of what the current trends is saying and he's saying now what is approved. <laughs> so if you are not loyal first to God and His Word, you can't be a true teacher. And a teacher also, one of the qualities is that he finds ways to teach in such a way that it will be, applicative, uh, will be uh, applicable to people. Because if you say that you're a teacher and you just teach in such an in a way that is so esoteric that people will say, oh, he's saying a lot of things, but I, I don't even understand what he's saying. Mm. Then that is not teaching. Mm. Teaching is not supposed to mystify. It's supposed to explain and to make people understand. Wow. So if you are teaching and people are coming and going away confused and say, ah, this person he speaks big grammar or he speaks, this is a lot of deep things, but I don't even understand what he's saying. Mm. Then I'm beginning to question, is that person a teacher? Because a teacher would be someone who, even if a mm. child is there, mm. will try and bring it down, mm. if possible, as much as possible to their level. Mm. Of course, among the mature people, there are mm. some things you can teach and will, will teach that will be above uh, maybe the general level. But that should be an exception rather than the rule. Mm. So, it's a thank, thank God for the grace of God upon your life. So, what I've heard so far now is that a teacher must love God, a teacher must be... Love the Word. Love the Word of God. Read it. Read it, digest it, yeah. make use of the Word of God. For himself apply first. Apply for himself first. That was what that yeah. uh, second Timothy chapter 15, um, verse 15 was talking about first. Mm -hmm. Apply to yourself first, mm -hmm. to God first. Mm -hmm. Then when you now show it to, by obedience to God's Word that He has given to you, you may start seeing that Word in your life and begin to meditate on that word, then you, again, what you said again about a teacher is somewhere that makes the word so simple for people to understand. Mm. So as we're talking about that understanding, I was looking at when Paul was trying to encourage this young minister of God. Mm. And he's talking about he needs to be, he, he, he needs to be strong, be strengthened, mm. and he was using soldiers as an example. Yeah. So you can see that he's a teacher. Yeah. He's talking to this he's, young person. He's um, farmer's example. He, well, Athletes. Because, at thinking in my mind, look at this man of God. The things he's using to minister to this young man, at the same time he's still ministering to us as well. Yeah. Those are basic things that, they're not really basic, they are things that they, even with time, they don't go away. Yeah. You always have a soldier timeless. with the, timeless. timeless yeah. You always have it there on, on mm -hmm. and on. So I, I really see it from that view. Mm -hmm. Now I wanted to flip now to the lifestyle of a teacher. The lifestyle of a teacher. So we can see that for me, can teachers be taught? Um, one who calls himself a teacher and who says he's not been taught or cannot be taught hmm. is is, or is does probably he have the teachable heart to be taught. Yeah, before because yeah. Um, every teacher, because no one there's no truth really that's new. Hmm. Beware of anyone who tells you he has a a revelation and a new revelation or something that nobody has ever had. Everything has already been taught. 
everything has already, people have already explored some of these things. Even some of the most doc, difficult uh, doctrines. I was talking to a young lady who's a Muslim um, yesterday, mm. well, no, it was the day before, mm. and she was, you know, she had this hang up about the doctrine of Trinity and call. Mm -hmm. And what I made her realize that at the end of the day, this thing, we can explain it using anthropological um, examples, i.e. from human example, you can use a naturalistic example from mm. nature, mm. but at the end of the day, it is a mystery. And there's only so much a human being can explain Trinity. At some point, you have to have faith and say, I believe this, even though I don't quite get all of it. So, a teacher is someone who would take time to learn and who is always constantly learning. I mean, personally, I'm always listening to teachers who are better than me. I'm always listening to people and receiving insights from them. And um, there are some people that are listening to us and say, wow, I've been reading this Bible for so long. And when they begin to explain and begin to apply, say, wow, this is a grace that I need to tap into Teacher. more. Yeah. I need to know more. So the fact that you're a teacher does not mean you're above God's people. Mm. It just means that God has given you responsibility. And that's the responsibility that he's going to, to judge you for, is mm. you're going to account for. Mm. So that is more reason why you should be learning. Mm. So he who teaches and who has stopped learning has started to derail. Mm. It's just a matter of time before you go into error. If you're not continuing to learn, and to understand God's word for yourself and mm. learn. So teachability is fundamental to wow. being able to teach. Really. I want us to, when, when, when is the line now mm. in what you hear or in your searching? When will you draw that line? Um, searching for what? For what I'm saying is, you know, there are teachers. Mm. We have a lot of teachers. Mm. Some will come, they will come revelations. Mm. And when we check the Bible, it wasn't really like that. Mm. I've heard a man of God minister and say that we call him. They call him teacher of the word, mm. and he says that the first man was not Adam. Mm. And when I heard that word, mm. I am not a teacher of the word, mm. but by the grace of God, I I preach with the little knowledge mm. I have that God has given to me. So when you mean the man of God uttered that word, I went to the Genesis. I go and studied and said. Where is he written that that was not the first Adam? So what he was saying, there was no scriptural backup per se, but he was saying that people were actually picking it up and all that. So I, I begin to ask myself, where will I draw a line or where will other people out there draw a line that are listening to these men of God that are talking about this is the new revelation that what they've heard. Not mm -hmm. one person I've heard, but I heard from somebody else as well mm -hmm. before. And I've heard other who are teachers of the word as well, who have said certain words in the past, maybe a particular doctrine, mm. giving certain rules and regulations, mm. people will be, and at the point of time, they now realize that what they said was not wrong, or God told them and said, what you said was you making those rules yourself. This is not what I told you to do. And then I came out public and said, all that I said, I was wrong. Mm. So how will we be able to add, put that into context of someone that's already been fed wrongly? Um, Let's look at um, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17. I'll read from verse 10. And then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. And these were more fair minded. And the authorized version says they are more noble. After, those, the, after the post of the 17? Yeah, Acts 17 from first. verse 10. Okay, yes, sir. Says the Jews were more fair minded mm -hmm. than those in Thessalonica, mm -hmm. in that they received the word of God with all readiness mm -hmm. and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Mm -hmm. Therefore, many of them believed, and not a few of the uh, few of the Greeks and prominent women as well as the men. So, these people searched the scriptures daily. Yes. There are people who come with all kinds of exotic doctrines. And it's always been there like that, even the time of, since the time of the old, the first apostles. Mm. From time to time, they will bring all kinds of doctrines and say all kinds of things. Mm. So you need to be careful mm. 
and you need to search the scriptures for yourself. Mm. So if somebody says, for example, that you, uh, like you, um, that um, Adam was not the first man and the rest, you have to say, go, go back. Where does it say there? Um, some of those things, I understand where they're coming from. Okay. But, uh, and they, they, they can even look, you can look at some of the stuff in the Bible mm. to begin to come to do some of those conclusions. Mm. But, how is it founded in scripture and where are they going with that? Mm. Is, the, is, the, is, is what you say. So, like Bereans, we need to search the word of God. Mm. So the Paul and Silas, they came with the apostolic anointing mm. and the ministry and they were teaching these people. Mm. But these people, yes, but they went back to search. Mm. They did their own due diligence. Mm. And that is how you escape, one of the ways by which you escape the trap of false teaching, mm. by doing your own due diligence to see. You have the Spirit of God in you as a child of God. Yeah. There are some things that when people begin to say, it just jazz, it rubs you the wrong way, you, you become discomforted. And that tells you, that begin, you begin to feel, mm, there's something not quite straight about this. And that should push you to be careful. That should give you caution to be careful and should push you to go and re-examine the scriptures for yourself to find out whether these things were not so. These were apostles, but they, these people still check them out and check out their doctrine mm. according to the word of God mm. and see whether it lines what they were saying aligned with the scriptures. Mm. So if Paul could be checked and found to find out whether he was right reading the, the uh, teaching the truth, then who else in this world should yeah. check? So, based on what you've spoken of, can we conclude in this line with a question I ask you that mm. our fathers, some of them were wrong in what we were taught. Is it possible that everything they taught us, they were right or true? It's not possible. Um, everybody, you know, one of my um, former pastors said something that because we are humans, every one of us have some level of error in our teaching from time to time. Mm. And it takes sometimes um, humility to realize, oh, I made a mistake there. I need to correct myself. Mm. And so the fact that somebody is anointed, gifted, and has been a blessing to you before, does not mean that they will always be right. So mm. no man is 100% right all 100% of the time. Only God is always right. Is always right. Mm. So even the most anointed men can sometimes teach and misapply scripture from because of the fleshly reasons mm. or because of distractions or because that's what they know. Mm. So if a man of God preached a word or a sermon to people to hear, and discovered that what he has preached after past of a few years later, discovered that what he preached was an error. What do you expect him to do as a teacher? Of course, God? it's to correct it. Um, I'll give a, 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 a recent example of what um, I give a recent example. Um, there was a time I was teaching. I was called to teach in the fellowship meeting in an annual fellowship meeting, and I spoke about. As I, I was teaching and I spoke about the, that I was talking about the fundamentally how people are, change, are beginning to change the gospel and also don't believe in, in certain scriptures and certain fundamental Bible doctrine. Mm -hmm. And I used the word that some people don't even believe in the Immaculate Conception. What? By that, I meant that people don't believe that Jesus Christ was born of a virgin, Mary. Okay. But somebody now came to me and said, you know, the word immaculate conception is a completely different thing. Yeah. Immaculate conception mean, means, by definition, according to the Catholic doctrine, yeah. that not only did Mary conceive Jesus as a virgin, but that she stayed a virgin all her life. Wow. which is contrary to our understanding of scripture. Mm. But I didn't, when I just said that, I just said that because I was trying to teach God's word, to say, how can you call yourself a man of God and you don't believe, you say you don't believe that Jesus rose from the dead, you don't believe in the magical conception and all that. Mm. But that was error 
even though I was trying to teach the truth, yeah. but I was, I was using a doctrinal, the example and the doctrinal expression I used was wrong. Mm. And I was corrected and I took that correction. So everybody needs correction from time to time. I mean, um, Pastor Sam Adeyemi, many of you know him, recently mm. gave an example mm. about when he was teaching it for, throughout his time in church, you always hear people preaching that the eagle is the, is the highest flying bird in the world mm. and that he's always, that because, it's, you know, they saw, and he taught it in church one day and somebody went to meet his wife and say, uh, met with, um, contacted his wife and said, look, the eagle is not the highest flying bird, there are other, other birds that fly mm. way above it. Mm. And they went to check it and they found that the eagle is not even in the top 10. Mm. And they came back and said to the members, look, this, I thought this because that's what I've heard all this while. Yes. But it was wrong. Wow. And I apologize. So that's humility. That's teachability. Mm. And that's also integrity. Yes, sir. Um, I've listened to a, one of the most respected um, men of God and who said something like, Oh, I've been teaching, I've been preaching and teaching now for so many decades that I've never had cause to come, to come and say, oh, um, these things, I've, one, anything I've taught is wrong, but I have to correct myself or apologize. That for me is error. Mm -hmm. There's no way you'll be teaching for decades and, and, that's, and I, this man, as much as I love and I respect him, he's been a great, great blessing to my life. I mention his name, virtually everybody will know him. Yeah. But the fact I know that there are some doctrines or some things that he teaches that are not quite mm. there in terms of the world. But he's, he's boasting mm. that he never has to, ever to, to correct or to change. So, so can we put it this way? Can we link it up when Jesus, when they called Jesus good teacher mm. and he said, they shouldn't call him good teacher because there's no, no there's no good except God, God yeah. that's a good teacher. Can we put it in that context of what you just said? Um, he didn't say that there's no good teacher but God, but said there's none good but no, God. But God. So yeah. it's God who's ultimate of good. All human beings, who, even those of us who are redeemed, mm -hmm. we're works in progress. Progress. Between the preacher itself. Uh, yeah, and the preacher itself. And mm -hmm. there's some things that you teach, mm -hmm. you will learn better, you understand better, mm -hmm. you understand clearly. And some things that you will teach um, that um, you will know oh, later that some of these things are actually errors or maybe overemphasis mm. that needs correction. Mm. 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 Uh, now, how do we, before I ask this question, mm -hmm. I want to read a scripture to us. Mm -hmm. James chapter 3, verse 1 says, Not many of you should become teachers, mm -hmm. serve in an official teaching capacity. My brothers, and sisters, for you know that we who are teachers will be judged by the higher standard because we have assumed greater accountability and more condemn condemnation mm. if we teach incorrectly. Mm. Now, that's the scripture I just read. What about mm. the other scripture that talks about you women should women should be silent in the church? In the church. Yeah. So, so how do you what do you how do you want us to relate that? How do we how do we put them together? Now let's deal with this one first. Okay. He said not many of you should be teachers of the word. Mm. The which you said at the beginning, you said that, um, that some are not called teachers, mm. but some believe that they are teachers, mm. probably because they teach, mm. uh, or they preach, but they are teachers of the word, mm. right? Mm. So how do we relate this scripture now? In your own understanding, how will you relate it to people who already call themselves teachers, yet they are not teachers? Personally, I... Or is this for I'm... only... As, or is, is as well a, is, is connected to teachers as well if they are teaching incorrectly um, even if it's this scripture applies even if you're teaching correctly mm. so you can teach God's word correctly yes but not live correctly so God's wow. standard is high so it's important to teach correctly but it's even more important to live correctly. Mm, mm. And God is wow, going to you, hold us to account for how we live, mm. not just for what we teach. Mm. So this, this is an add-on to yeah. qualities of a, a good teacher, yeah. reminding them that yeah. even if, as you are teaching the 
teaching the people alone. You yourself. are being taught as well. You know, I, 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 I was speaking to somebody, I think today, and he was saying that, you know, it's always good for someone to listen to what he preaches. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was saying that I do that all the time. Many I just said that my son can testify. Mm -hmm. I just start listening to myself. You know, sometimes I hear words that I say out of my mouth, mm -hmm. and those words sometimes is some things that I need to be corrected as well. Mm -hmm. I'm learning to correct myself. Sometimes, even some prayers I made, the next maybe two days or three days or four days later, I need that prayer and I just start listening to myself. I say, Amen, mm -hmm. because it is the Holy Spirit that is speaking through me, to me and to other people as well. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So now, how we now address the other part of you women that the mm -hmm. women should be silent in the church? In church. Mm -hmm. So we know some churches mm -hmm. still apply these same particular scriptures to the ministry. They don't allow women to preach. Mm -hmm. So how will we be able to, what do you think about our scripture? That's, this is where you, you've asked a very difficult question. If <laughs> um, Paul had good reasons for saying what he said about not allowing women to preach. But Paul also was a product of his background. Mm. a product of his environment mm -hmm. and a product of the situation on the ground at mm. that time. Um, in, in, in the Corinthian church and other, other Gentile churches in particular, mm. Mm -hmm. um, there were the, um, we understand that there are some women that become quite mm. vocal and somewhat destructive mm. in church. Yeah. And Paul said, look, I don't agree that men, women should use up men's authority mm. and set themselves up to teachers, to be teachers. Mm. But they should be quiet. Mm. Now, the question is now, mm. is that an, the question now, is that, is there, is that an absolute law? Mm -hmm. And does that mean that women can never ever teach? Um, and we do see examples of women taking leadership role, even in the church, people like Priscilla. Yeah, the wife of Aquila. Yes, who helped teach um, even a great man of God mm -hmm. called Apollos. Mm -hmm. So, but when you look at it, when you look read the New Testament, mm -hmm. you will find that that's the way the church was set up in, yes, the, in the early days mm -hmm. was set up with men as leaders. Mm -hmm. And mm. it was mainly, even when Jesus Christ chose his apostles, it was only men that he chose. Mm. It was set up as men as leaders. Mm. And men were expected to lead. And that was what was happening even from the days of the, mm. of the, um, the fathers of faith. Mm. Days of um, the forefathers, the Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It always been men who took the lead. Mm. But even in their time, there were exceptions. People like Deborah, mm. who was a mother in Israel, was an exception. Mm. Um, so we had people who, women who were exceptional leaders, but in general, it was mm. men's mm. role to teach and to lead mm. uh, God's people. Mm. And to, in today's world, I think it's still likely the case. Now, does that mean that women and not, I should never be permitted to teach. Mm. Personally, I would say no. Wow. Um, if you look at the biblical evidence, mm. and if you look at the New Testament evidence, and this is why I say, as a teacher, you have to be loyal to the scriptures. You find that, that it's almost like exclusive to men. Mm. And that's why people who are very, very militant about women not teaching, that's why they get their strength from it. Mm, because they have a scripture back into it. And they have several scriptures, uh, at least a couple of scriptures back So will I it. say now, for example, mm. when I say, I say, okay, the women Paul are talking about here mm. are the women that one way or other they might be disobedient to their to their husband, mm. or they might be they might be women that Paul felt that they were not matured enough at that time to mm. teach. Mm. 
or will I still say they were women that Paul felt that they had not anointed to teach the word. So if I talk for that point of view of someone watching me right now, but yeah. saying that in his heart and say no, and she's a woman, I said no. That I have to teach. Um, where God gives a grace yes. and gives the ability, He also makes a way for that to be expressed. How that is expressed um, will differ from person to person. So. In Paul's day, there was a big, there was an, a, a big issue about women leading and preaching in church, which is why he asked them to be silent. Now, in today's church, is that still the same? And if you ask, depending on who you ask, some will say yes, and some will say no. Mm. But it's still clear. And as a Bible teacher, women should always be under authority mm. in church. And even when they are teaching, they will be teaching under authority. And also, men should be under authority anyway. Because even though you are the male leader and the pastor, mm. you can't just do or say whatever you like. You are under authority. You're under authority of God's Spirit and under authority of other church leadership. Mm. Under authority of whatever denomination or congregation. Can, can, can the authority be wrong sometimes? Of course, yes. So if you're not under that kind of authority that is wrong, that we're able to deal with that based on what you just spoke about. Um, the first thing is be careful of a spirit of rebellion. Because even when you're right, if you go in the if you go in the spirit of rebellion, it's dangerous not just to you, but to the rest of the body. But there are times when, because you are standing clearly for truth, you might have to be called aside and go separate ways with some people mm. because you're standing for truth. That's what happened to Martin Luther, uh, which caused the Reformation, because the church then was teaching that people had to pay this and do this and do this penance and pay money and mm. to pay indulgence and mm -hmm. do this to get God's favor. Mm. And he came and he began to um, loudly proclaim that it's only by grace alone that we are saved, mm. that God's word alone is sufficient. Mm. So he said, God's word is sufficient alone, God's grace alone is sufficient. Mm. And the only way by which you can get God's approval is by faith alone and by trusting Jesus alone, not by all these things that the church was setting up mm. for people. And they tried to silence him and he said, no, uh, this is the authority of God's word I believe in. Mm. And eventually he was excommunicated from the then church. Mm. Wow. And that's how the Lutheran movement started and the, um, the Reformation came. So there are times when if the authorities and the leadership stop the proclamation of truth or people think that there, there might be times when it will be prudent and wise to say, look, if this is the case, I have to go this way. So what, what do you call what do you call rebellious? Rebellious is when you lash out and it's almost like I don't care, I'll do my own thing. After all, I'm anointed like you or even more anointed than you and call. So there's a fine line sometimes between standing for what is right and true and being rebellious. Mm -hmm. And as a child of God, the Holy Spirit is there to say, look, you're going too far. Mm. You know, it's like, for example, in the Acts of the Apostles, mm. when the man was healed at the beautiful gates, the mm. leaders of uh, these, the congregation, the Sanhedrin, mm. called the apostles and said, this is Jesus. You are using his name to cause trouble. Don't teach in this name again. Mm. We forbid you. And the apostles said, you 
he acknowledged you as leaders, we acknowledge you as the authorities. Mm. But this commission we have from God, mm. we will have to fulfill it. Mm. This name, we have to proclaim it, because that's what God has called us to do. Mm. We have to say. But they didn't do it in a hateful and in a tit for tax or mm. way. So when you become, because you can be right mm. and go about things in the wrong mm. way, mm. and that will ultimately hurt you mm. and will ultimately hurt the church. Mm. Praise God. So you need to check your heart mm. to make sure that even when you take a stand mm. for righteousness, for truth, mm. you don't allow the spirit of anger, of um, hatred and of rebellion to enter because the devil can use that as opportunity to come into your heart and then you'll be going and once you it gets you into that place you are you are in trouble praise, praise god Quick, um i just want to say something mm. based on what you spoke now i think what i've learned from what you said so far mm. and i'm looking at it based on god understanding mm. as well mm. remember the first person you mentioned is the luther am i right mm. At that time, they might be looking at Luther that he was rebellious. Yes, of course, yeah. you can see that what he was saying mm -hmm. was the truth. truth yeah. So sometimes when you're saying the truth, people can put a tag on you of yeah. being rebellious. Yeah. What I believe rebellious means is that anything you do that is outside God, mm -hmm. that is just self, mm -hmm. self-understanding, self-proclamation, self, -proclamation, self uh, 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 just want to make yourself known. Aggrandizement. Yes, those are, that, mm -hmm. we can use that word for that but when you are standing on the truth and i discovered that most people that are teachers or people that are standing or ministers of god genuinely having the oil of god in their life there is always that strengthen them to pass the message and say this is mm. not what god wants so, and i begin to learn that in time you see that different churches today people always come out from different churches today they will start with a certain movement. Mm. The movement will go from one to the other because people have been seeing different lights, mm. coming light and be seeing change of people's understanding. Mm. So my understanding is that the scriptures we read, we read the scriptures, but sometimes some certain scriptures is not applied for certain people at a certain time. Mm. I want to read that scripture we're talking about, sir. Mm. That first Corinthians chapter 14 verse 34 says, mm. The women, the women should be silent in churches, mm. for they for they are not authorized to speak, mm. but are to take subordinate place, as the law says. Mm. Yes, the law says that. Mm. Now, said if there is any anything they want to learn, have question about anything being said or taught, mm. they are to ask their own husband at home, mm. which means when they come to church, you say your, your mouth. Now, he now says again, ask their husband at home, for it is proper for it, it is improper for a woman to talk in church. Now, because of time, so, mm. what if it, that he marries does not have the knowledge? That's a good question. Uh, in those days, religious education. Can you repeat what you said? In those days, religious education was mainly the exclusive domain of men. Yes. So the Hebrew boys, mm. they are taught the Torah, the five book of Moses, mm. first five book of the Bible and co mm. mm. and girls were rarely ever taught God's word. So most of the time, the women only hear bits and pieces from here and there. Yes. So from the onset, they were not equipped to know God's word, even when they loved him. Mm. Um, they were not equipped with knowledge. Even in those days, even secular schools, the schools then were mainly for men. So the women were usually either fully illiterate or semi illiterate. Mm. Only the men were literate mm. in, in general. Yeah. In, the, in those days. Mm. But the situation is different now. Um, in the UK, for example, most women are more, more educated than men. In the universities, for example, there are more mm. women mm -hmm. than men. Mm. There are more women graduates in the UK than mm. men. Mm. Um, so it's a different ball game. Uh, game. 
and it's a different season. Yeah. Time. But the principle of 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 submission mm. and of not usurping authority is mm. still there. Mm -hmm. So even though the times might have changed, yes, the principles are still there. Yes. And we need to be respectful of those principles. Yes, yes. Praise the Lord. So we still have 10 more minutes more. So we, 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 we end it all. But I want us to look at now, we've spoken about the qualities of a teacher. Mm -hmm. We've spoken about um, 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 what the world of us is about. Te not everybody should be teachers of the world. Now, the part I want you, I want you to just speak, little, speak more of now is that how do we know someone that is not called by God in the teaching ministry? Um... The Bible says by the fruits you should know them. So what are the fruits? Um, if somebody is not able to clearly explain God's word in, in a way that is anointed and that can be can apply, then he's most likely not a teacher. There are preachers and there are teachers. And I would say it's most ministers are preachers. So a preacher will typically look at different as a theme that he wants to preach on. Mm. Maybe he wants to teach on the grace of God, mm. and will look at different scriptures and then come and talk about it and the rest for the next 30, 45 minutes, one hour. Mm. But a preacher might only use a few verses. A teacher, a preacher. Um, a teacher yes. might only use a story, mm. and it will break it down in such a way that it's almost like you're watching a a technicolor movie a, four, a, a, a 3D movie mm. or even a 4D movie because you're actually immersed in it so yes if God has not called you to be a teacher you can still learn mm. and you can by all means preach most of the things we see done on Sunday morning in church is mainly preaching Mm. Um, but of course, a lot of pastors are also gifted to teach. Mm. In fact, um, a lot of Bible scholars, New Testament scholars, believe that pastor teachers are two. T they are hyphenated gifts. They are twin gifts. Mm. So, most who have one have the other. Mm. So, if you see somebody who's an effective pastor, you. See most likely see some grace of teaching in his life. Mm. And if you see somebody who's a good teacher, you'll most likely see mm. the gift of, of a pastor in his life. So they usually often come together, but not always. Mm. Can you see the reflection of a teacher in a student? Uh, yes, um, because you, you, you become what you behold. Mm. Let me give you an example. When I was a young man, I attended a youth conference and we had two young men who were called to teach, to preach. And when they preached, the first one came, I think, the way he preached, I said, this one is, is, is from uh, Pastor Olubi Johnson's church. Because ex almost, you know, the way he teaches and calls, and then another one came, I said, this one is Pastor Deboe's. So, because when, it's just normal that when you listen to someone very regularly, yes. you start to copy them, their mannerisms, their way of teaching, teaching. and call. Mm. It's just natural to some extent. But when you become more and more, the more mature you become, mm. you find your own voice. Mm. So even though you might still be inspired by them, mm. but you don't, try to be them, you are yourself. Mm, so cool. that's one area where when you grow into maturity, mm. you, get, you find your own voice, mm. you find your own way mm. of doing things. So was Timothy talking like Paul? Well, we've not had a recording of Timothy. <laughs> <laughs> but I think most likely there's some, some things about Paul that would have rubbed off on him. Mm -hmm. If you and I talk together, we play together, and particularly if you look up to me, you just assume some of my mannerisms after a while. It's just natural. Oh, praise God. Mm. But this is how I, how I want to look at it now. Mm. Paul said, imitate me as, as I, I imitate, imitate Christ. Christ yes. Not just in what I preach, mm. 
the lifestyle of Christ. Yes, yeah, that's the most important. But so we these days we are taking a, we are picking the style of the preaching, mm. not the character of Christ. Mm. There are two things: imitate me as I imitate Christ. What Jesus believed in, mm. because Jesus is our master. Mm. I am a Christian. You are a Christian mm. because of Christ. So we are believers. We are, we are, we are beyond that. Mm. We are believers in Christ. Mm. So Timothy, I want you to look at the lifestyle, the love of Christ that I have. Look at the love of Christ that I have. Look at the devotion I have mm. to know about him more. Mm. Look at the which I press on to preach the gospel without Look at the way I humble myself. Mm. Look at how be bold, not my style. I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't preach like my pastor, I don't. Mm. But that doesn't make me, I don't learn from him. Mm. But if you look at people these days, they want to imitate the man of God, they want to dress like the man of God. But what the scripture was saying is not about dressing like the man. It's about the lifestyle of Jesus that is in that man is what Christ want us to imitate. Well, that's where the wisdom and, like I said, the wisdom and maturity comes. Mm, mm. See, when I was a child, the Bible says I wow. walk like a child, behave like a child. Yes. When I grew up, I yes. left childish things. Um, you know, you can fake the accent, mm. you can fake the mannerism, yes, you can fake a lot of things, or you can try to imitate it, all, but it's the essence of what's coming, is the grace of mm. God that you need to focus mm. on. Is it possible for a teacher to be unique? Well, all sound teachers are unique. Mm. If you show me a sound, mature Bible teacher, you'll find that they're unique. Because different people, God will give you your gift mm. and you will express it based on who you are. Mm. Is there any kind? Any kind? What, what do I mean by kind? Like you see certain people, like me for example, like TDJ, what you said before, mm. they might not be preaching like TDJs. But when you see them, they may not preach like him, but you see a kind of that. Um, yeah, they are, they are, I mean, you know, T.G. Jakes is, is more of a preacher and a proclaimer wow. than a teacher. Yeah. In my own understanding of him, he's more of a, of course he teaches, yes. but he's more of a preacher and a proclaimer. And he's very good at what he does. Hmm. Um, he's very good at what he does. And... Yes, people, there are people in that sector and there are people who are more um, more like laid back and more measured in a sense and they deliver. But at the end of the day, whatever God gives you grace to do, mm. He will anoint it and mm. He will bless God's people. Amen. Amen. And the important is find your voice, find your uniqueness mm. and use that. Mm. Don't try and copy T.D. Jakes. Mm. Don't try and copy uh, Joel Osteen. Mm. Don't try and call it, copy Billy Aconi mm. or copy. All of those people can be, to some extent, inspirations to mm. you, mm. depending on what God calls you to, to do. But the important thing is to find your own mm. voice. Somebody said, and I don't fully agree with him, but I see where it's coming from. It says that a pastor and a Bible preacher takes at least 10 years to find his voice. Mm. Wow. I, what he's saying basically is that by the time you mature enough mm. and to understand, full, to clearly understand God's uh, calling upon your life and how to, mm. to fulfill it, you probably have been doing it for at least 10 good years. Praise God. Plus. So praise God. So now how do we, how do we, as a, as, 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 as a teacher, know his audience? Is, um, it, is, it, is it important for a teacher to know his audience? Yes, because if you don't know your audience, you can't apply properly. You can't give the examples mm. and the applications that are relevant to them. So what are your examples you have? Teachers um, that you know that... So if, for example, based, for example, if you lived in Africa all your life mm. and you come here to preach, let's say you come to a pretty good congregation of white British people, mm. if you're not careful, a lot of the things that you were saying would, even though it might be biblical, 
will seem strange and unrealistic and even sometimes offensive to them. Not because you intend to, but because you don't really understand where they are coming from. Mm. And you're not able to tailor and match your examples. Mm. In fact, there are some examples, if you're coming, if you're teaching those people, you should not even be giving those examples, you should look for better <laughs> examples. Mm. Some, some of the things you say will offend them. Some of you will freak them out, some of them will confuse them. Mm. So, you need to tailor. Then if you're Change to young people, for example. You need to know hmm. how they vibe, how they see things, how they understand things, and come down to their level. So part of this, yeah. You can't teach a bunch of teenagers the way you teach a bunch of middle-aged people. Hmm. So there's a way you, you have to mix it up and you have to change hmm. to help them to understand. Hmm. Praise yeah. the Lord. Then the last question that we'll pray. Hmm. Now, what do you think viewers should be watching for? out there in the area of to know you said by their fruit you know them mm. but their fruit you shall say you say that a good a good tree will bear good fruit yeah. right so how much for because there are a lot of false teachers out there yes and there are a lot of good teachers out there that the Holy Spirit has led them mm. on mission to be teachers of the world mm. now what do you think people should be looking at or looking for or watching for Again, like I said, be a Berean. Don't just swallow everything you hear, hook, line, and singer. And if you feel uncomfortable about something, find out for yourself. Pray and, ask those, and go back to the scriptures. Hmm. The important thing is to be self-learning hmm. and to be a student of the Bible yourself. Hmm. And if you're a student of the Bible, it's, most errors are not sophist too sophisticated for you to pick up if hmm. you are a, a good student of the Bible. Hmm. You might not know Yes, sir. But there are some things, when they begin to say, mm, I'm not quite sure I agree with that. Mm, that doesn't quite gel with the God I know in the Bible. Mm. So the most important thing is, and then don't, because somebody is gifted, anointed, or does miracles, or he has a big church, or he has a big ministry, don't follow them blindly. Mm. Always be anchored to, your script, to the Bible yourself, mm. because every man has tendency to have error, mm. even the most sincere. Wow. It's not every error that is caused by people trying to mm. deceive. It's sometimes because that's the best they know, mm. that's the best they've been taught, or that's the best they have understood, mm. and, they, and they perpetrate that. So you need to learn to know, to draw the line by reaching the Bible yourself and checking things out for yourself. Mm. Praise the Lord. So what are the difficulties that teachers or preachers go through? Uh, in teachers in particular, one of the challenges of preachers is that, of teachers, is that often people don't see them as being exacting enough. Hmm. People like um, somebody who comes and razzle-dazzle them, sort hmm. of. And most, most teachers are not like that. Preachers hmm. are good hmm. at razzle-dazzle. Hmm. But most teachers are take, they, are, they have to you know they take their time to speak often one by one and hmm. call. So often people might want to look down on them. Hmm. Also, teaching takes time. Hmm. So, so what you can preach and give an exhortation on for fifteen minutes, hmm. if you want to teach it, you might need three hours. Oh, wow, praise God! Quick so, one, sir. Family now. What does teacher go through? How can the teacher be able to balance the family and the ministry? It's um, also knowing that your family is important and taking your family with you. Personally, I believe my most important ministry is to teach my children and to, to last I extend my wife the word of God. If my children understand clearly the basic doctrines of the Bible and understand how the dots connect in the scripture, then I believe I've done, I've had a successful ministry, whether I preach to two people or to 200,000 people. But if, as a Bible teacher, I preach to millions daily, and my children and my wife, they, they are confused about scripture, or they see that I'm patently not living the life hmm. and I'm living a life of hypocrisy that I failed. Hmm. Wow. May, God, may God 
deliver us from such in Jesus things. name in Jesus name quick one I, I want us to pray now viewers have you not been blessed because sorry that we've taken a lot of your time but I believe it what you hearing it what you receiving it what you you renew your mind through this word of God and I pray in the name of Jesus God, that every word you receive today mm -hmm. that you'll be a good ground in Jesus name mm -hmm. I want us to pray for everyone this moment that have received words that have misled them in what we have found the same in a hook that they cannot come out from mm -hmm. i want to let you begin to pray say, father say every word that i've received mm -hmm. say father every word that i've received mm -hmm. every word i've received that i've received wrongfully mm -hmm. without not searching for the scripture but not searching from for the scripture but i'm not for, for seeking for you lord I, from this moment, Lord King of Glory, begin to wipe them away from me in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. Begin to wipe them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And one of the things the man of God said that I really put into, that we need to choose into prayer, is about going through teachers of the word. We could have said most of them today, there are a lot of teachers of the word that are going through a lot, that even the people in their home does not even believe in what or they what they've been called to do let's begin to pray that god begin to give the man the wisdom in the name of jesus christ to be able to manage his home in jesus name let's begin to pray for all the men of god all the teachers all the prophets all the pastors let's begin to commit them before the lord that the lord begin to give them greater strength in the name of jesus of grace area of power and authority greater strength in the area of mercy divine favor in the name of Jesus let me you know pray for every man everyone call into the office that the Lord begin to open their eyes to know what they've been called to do in the mighty name of Jesus and there are a lot of people out there who call themselves teachers whereas they are not supposed to be teachers they are supposed to do what God has called them to do not all of us should be teachers of the word just as James chapter 3 verse 1 talks about now let's begin to pray say Father open my eyes reveal me to me gift you call me to do in the mighty name of Jesus say Father reveal me to me let me begin to know who I am in the name of Jesus say Father guide me Lord let your perfect wisdom in my life the Lord showed me a man this morning, and what did he show me? The man had a vehicle, and this vehicle was faulty. This vehicle was faulty. Let's begin to pray. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, say, Lord, and that vehicle represent a ministry. Say, Father, the ministry you want me to do. Say, Father, uphold it with your righteous hand in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, what you want me to do. Say, Lord. I need healing. Let there be healing in that ministry in the name of Jesus. Let there be healing in my life in the name of Jesus. Guys, that right now that is going through a lot of challenge. Say, precious Father, I invite you to my home this morning. I invite you to come and be Lord over my home. Say, Lord, come and be Lord over my home. Say, Lord, come and be Lord over my home in the name of Jesus. Or that man of God, you've been called, but the enemy is fighting you seriously, seriously, not to fulfill you, the divine purpose of God in your life. Say, Father, I invite you to come and battles for me. He said, Lord, don't let shame be upon me, Lord. Say, Lord, don't put me, don't let shame have dominion over me. Say, Lord, don't, don't let every force of darkness have dominion over me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Quick, let's go to Psalm 27. I want us to pray from Psalm 27. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Let's pray for Psalm 27. Say, verse 2 says, When the wicked came to against me to eat of my flesh, my adversaries, and my enemy, they stumbled and fell. Now, begin to pray. Say, Lord, you are the one that did it in the sense of the enemy. Say, Father, every plans of the enemy to come and bring me down, to come and bring the ministry down, to come and bring all that pertain to me down. Name of Jesus Christ.
Say peace be still. In the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. If you've heard us today, and you've not given your life to Jesus, this is a time for you to give your life to Jesus. You know, the one that is the greatest teacher, the one that is the that that fire your life, the one that can give you that divine restoration, beautiful in your life, the one that can give you life is Jesus, and that Jesus is calling you this moment, heart of yours to Him now. The soul is not to you, but he wants you to give it to him so that he will find you by his word so that it will make you to be like him. Remember, Jesus is coming back very soon. When Jesus Christ comes, will you be among those that will, will you door? Will you heaven is real? Hell is real. I Lord, I know I have sinned against you. Say, Father, let your mercy begin to speak for me. Say, Father, I confess all my sins before you. Say, Father, help me this moment. I am in the name of Jesus. Say, Father, as I came to this new year, say, Father, God, cleanse me completely. I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I give you my all. Give you this moment. Say, Father, come and take dominion over me in the mighty name. Christ. Say, Lord, I believe your death on the cross of Calvary is for me. I believe your death for me on the cross of Calvary is for me. It's for my name to be in the book of life. I believe in the power of your blood. Say, Lord, let your power in your blood begin to wash me now in the name of Jesus. Let the power on the blood begin to wash me now. Let the spirit that was cast to death begin to rise to me and let dominion over me. Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And if you have prayed that prayer, I want to pray for you. Yes. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. For those who are making a choice to follow you. Yes, Lord. I pray that you will establish them. Amen. You will draw them to you. Amen. In your word. Amen. And you will help them to find a church. Amen. Where they can plug in Amen. and belong Amen. and grow Amen. in God's family. Amen. By the power of the Spirit. Amen. And I just have the impression to pray for some people are there you're listening Amen. and you have been led astray mm. by manipulation mm. and by error of men and you are some of you are even bitter and angry yes i want uh, the holy spirit is speaking to you yes. to let go of that anger Amen. that's um that's um resentment yes. some of you have been manipulated out of your money of your material things some of you have been misled yes Lord. let's go of that Amen. and pray and receive, uh, give forgiveness. Amen. And God is going to restore you. Amen. He's going to give you grace. Amen. Amen. And He will going to help you to be Amen. plugged back in. Amen. Fully into His church. Amen. And you grow, and you will become someone who helps other people to grow too. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, sorry, just give me three more, uh, four more minutes. Praise the Lord. On Sunday next week, we're going to be here. Worshiping and praying. And a lot of men of God are going to be, women of God are going to be as well. We'll come here to worship and pray. Pray is a prayer of revival. It's a prayer of revival. God wants to revive people. God wants to deliver people. God wants to restore people. So I want you, and I believe that it's all about prayer. Jesus said, pray without ceasing. I want you to understand something. This is a time we need to pray. A time to pray. You are entering the new year. It's a time for you to pray for your life. Please log on at Blaze Osamwe Blaze in Facebook. Blaze Osamwe. Just log on on this same platform. We're going to be praying. Log on and come and pray with expectations that the Lord will what touch time? you in the name of Jesus. It starts from 7 o'clock. Praise the Lord. So 7 o'clock in the evening is going to start. So just come and log on and pray. As you're praying, be praying with us. You're worshiping, be worshiping with us. Get ready and come and praise the Lord and let God transform your life in Jesus' name. Amen. I want you just quickly just um, uh, 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 let's share the grace together. The grace of the Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ, the Lord and the, and the sweet fellowship, fellowship of the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Bless yes. and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 This message Amen. shall follow us all the days of our lives and we, we shall dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord. Lord. Forever, forever and ever. ever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you. I believe by the grace of God, two, two Tuesdays from now, we will meet again 
and the Lord will bless you and keep blessing you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord.